don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today is the first Saturday of the month, 1st of April. So it's time for a new mission over on our Mission Inspiration Facebook group. So let me turn over to my overhead camera. I'll read you through the prompts and then I'll show you my art journal page based on the prompts for this month. So this is the prompt sheet for the month of April 2023. So let's just dive right into it and have a look at the list of ingredients on the left hand side here. So we've got glue, paper strips or washi tape, cover with a layer of paint or gesso, add paper or fabric shapes, add doodles or scribbles, add illegible text around the page, add an old photograph, add drips or splatters, or add a stencil or two. So there's quite a decent scope of things we can do in there. Um, and your words for inspiration are oracle, travel, silence, wild and diary. So normally I kind of go through these sort of in order. Sometimes I jump around a little bit. Um, sometimes I stick with all these or just work with these or sometimes I work with just the words on the right hand side. Um, I'm probably going to do, a, well I know I'm going to be doing a combination, I'm going to include one of the words here um, only because of pure happenstance um, and I'll explain what in a second. Um, so I'll kind of go through some of these steps here in order, maybe just to jump around a little bit on some of them. So I'm going to be doing in my Mission Inspiration Art Journal for 2023. So I'm back onto the correct page for the month where I should have been um, because I accidentally went on the wrong page on a previous month. So we went January, February, March. It should have been February, should have been there, March should have been there. But I did it on the wrong page because I'm an idiot. Anyway, so I'm going to be working on this page here. So the first thing, um, what I normally do when I'm doing one of these Mission Inspiration Art Challenges is that I gather my resources. So I started going through my um, collection, grabbing some washi tapes, and I've just gone for plain black and white washi tapes. Um, because I'm going to be adding a layer of paint or gesso over the top, so that's going to give me my colour. And it says add paper or fabric shapes. Well, I started going through my collection of papers, just thinking, well, what kind of shapes can I add? And I thought, well, I might just tear shapes or, or circles. Um, doesn't I say that they have to be like triangles, circles, squares or rectangles? You can pretty much just put whatever shape down you want. If you've got a punch of a butterfly, then do that. You know, if you've got a punch of something else, then, then use that. You know, it doesn't have to be any particular shape whatsoever. But as I was going through my um, collection of papers, um, I discovered this. And this is a sheet of stickers. And this must have been sent to me um, quite a few years ago um, in Happy Mail and I'm sorry but I can't remember who sent it to me. Um, one of these days whenever I get Happy Mail I'm going to start writing people's names on things um, so I can at least say thank you. Um, but if you remember sending me this <laughs> and you're still watching my YouTube channel um, please just put a comment and just say yeah it was me. <laughs> but anyway as you can see um, the prompt is wild or one of the prompts is wild purely, purely by coincidence and happenstance. I didn't even know I had this hour. I'd completely forgotten that I had this. So I think my paper shapes are going to be this. They're going to be one of these or a couple of these. I might do a monster and one of the, the characters. It'd be like this one here because I like this. I like this one with the crown. Or it could even just be those two. I'm just hoping. Yeah, they are still sticky, which is brilliant. Right, so job done really so it's just a question then of going through the steps one by one so let's first thing to do then so number one is glue paper strips or washi tape well washi tape doesn't need glue in because it's already got sticky on the back so I'm just gonna dive straight in so I'm gonna put just some washi around the page and I'm just gonna build up a couple of clusters or two or three clusters 
of the washi tape. Um, so, and I'll just lay one on top of the other. Which is the easiest way to build up these kind of little clusters that you want. Um, three different types of washi, which is going to be more than enough. Just get rid of that front bit because it's not quite as sticky as it should be. I mean, you can use as many washi tapes as you want. It's entirely up to you. There's no, <laughs> like I said, it's, there's no stipulation whatsoever. Right, so I've got those. Now, I'm going to come back in with that brick one. I'm going to add a horizontal just to kind of break it up a little bit and again over here and then one final piece There we go. So that's just acting as a background texture. Um, you can get similar effects just by adding stamps or just stenciling directly onto your page. That, that's pretty much all it is. It's just adding that kind of background layer. All right, so the next thing it says, number two is to cover with a layer of paint or gesso. So paint. Um, Shall I use colour at this stage or shall I just use gesso at this stage? I think I'll just use gesso. I'm looking at the colours now in the, on the sheet and thinking, well, there's kind of greens and oranges, um, kind of neutral tones just in those. I think I am going to use those. But I think I'll add in some green in a minute. So let me just grab a paintbrush. Got some water. I think I've run out of kitchen towel as well. Oh good. It's alright, there's a wet wipe that's dried out, which is perfect. Right, so the only thing that this gesso is gonna do is just knock back that washi a little bit. Which is you know if it's too strong. Sometimes the patterns on these things are a bit too heavy, but it just knocks it into the background a little bit. You still get that kind of texture. From the pattern, he says, trying to remember to speak. Um, yeah, you still get the texture from the pattern, but it's just not quite so in your face. Which is fine, I'll do. Okay, so while that's still kind of wettish, let me see if I can get some paint. Um, I haven't used my deco art ones for quite some time. It says scrabbling really quickly to try and get some colour out. Those two will do. So I wanted greens. As per usual, my desk away from this little bit that you can see is a mess. Okay, so let's grab some of that pistachio mist, a little bit of green. So let's just drop. I haven't been used for a while. So I'm just going to make sure that the binder is all mixed in nicely. One of these days I will actually complete a sentence in one go. Um, in fact, let's grab, let's grab that wet wipe, which is dry actually, but I've just wiped my brush on it. I think some of the parts of the page that I've got the gesso on, you'll be able to manoeuvre the paint quite a bit. And some of the parts of the page that doesn't have the gesso where I missed, 
it will grab really quickly, which is fine. All right, let's grab that other colour. Again, add in paint with a paper towel. It's just another option. Or you can use a brayer, your fingers. Okay, so that's quite a dark green, isn't it? Okay, I've still got the gesso. <laughs> so I'm just going to go back over and just knock some of that green back. It's not quite dry yet. It's so bad now, is it? Let's grab that light green again. Put a couple of spots there and using the same brush. There we go. Just reintroduce that colour again. Okay, so that gesso can go to one side, brush can go in the water, and then we need to dry the page off. Okay, that didn't take long. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what we've done so far. So we've glued or stuck strips, paper strips or washi tape, we've covered with a layer of paint or gesso, we've done both, haven't we? Okay, so before we add our fabric or paper shapes, which are going to be these stickers, um, I'm going to jump. So add doodles or scribbles, it says. Okay, so we've got doodles which we can do um, probably around the page to create a border. And then it says add illegible text around the page too. Well, I've got a little bit of a poem that I want to add. <laughs> Which is a bit stupid really. Um, it's supposed to be illegible text which means you can't read it but I can't just do illegible text. I've got to do something that I know what I'm actually doing. My, I need to write something even though if it's really really bad handwriting. I can't just scribble nonsense. So I found a poem um, online um, by a, a, a female English poet called M.S. Moem. Something like that anyway. Sorry, I should have written the name down. Um, and there was this little poem here. So it's, you were not born a statue, you nor rooted like a tree. You were born a wild one, a spirit pure and free. No cage should hold you captive, no title should define. You're flexible and fluid, you, so you can change at any time. With nothing set in stone, so much to explore. Wander down a million paths and rattle every door. Never stop adventuring, embrace your inner child, stay fearless, stay curious, stay positive, stay wild. I love that, I thought it was really good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, use this bit, this last um, stanza, is it? I'm not really good with poetry. Um, because that says stay wild, I thought adding that as my illegible text would work really well. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I think... Um, is just add some doodles around the page. So just to kind of create that frame, I'm going to start just adding a little bit just like this. But what I think I also want to do is start adding the illegible script. So from here, I'm going to start adding those lines around the page here, but also build in a little bit of this doodling at the same time, if you understand what I mean. So... So there we go with the, the illegible text, so. See how you create your 
although it's illegible, now that you know what it is, so never stop adventuring, you can still see it. So, just turn it. So, embrace your inner child. And then stay fearless. Stay curious. And then along the bottom, it's in the corner. Positive. Stay wild. So we've got doodles and illegible text around the page. And then we can go back in once we've actually got our stickers down there. It does actually say about adding an old photograph. If I hadn't have found those pictures, um, these stickers, which are quite graphical, I would have added a photograph in there. So, for once, I am not going to do that step. I know. <laughs> I'm going to deliberately not do one. Right, okay, so let's have a look at these stickers then. So this is going to be adding our paper or fabric shapes. Like I've said many times with these mission inspirations, you don't have to follow them slavishly. As long as you're inspired by one of those items on that list, then that's fine. So we're using the washi. as a bit of ground. I think actually I might actually stick that one on that second level up there. So it looks like it's actually chasing them. So this is, I don't know what, is, this, is there a date on this? No. There's a copyright symbol but there's no date so I can't even tell you how old this is. Uh, paperhouseproductions.com Copyright Paperhouse Productions, do, 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 but no actual year of manufacture or anything like that. So, but I wonder if he scanned that QR code, whether it would actually take, it says it's going to take you to the blog. That might give me a date, or it might not even work, um, because they don't tend to, do they? Well, things, it must be a few years old now, because I mean, the, the, I know they did a movie out of it, but anyway, I'm digressing, aren't I? Okay, so. Yeah, it tends to happen. So, shapes, doodles and scribbles, eligible, pay, eligible text around the page. Add drips or splatters. Okay, so, don't want to go too mad with these drips and splatters. And I don't particularly want to um, cover these. So I'm just going to drop a bit of tissue over the top there. And that is the same tissue that I used earlier on because I've got no kitchen towel here I've used it all and uh, what's this a bit of scrap paper and let's just get a little bit like that and then that should just cover him up mostly okay so colour shall we use Black, obviously. We're doing splatters, aren't we? 
So let's see if I can find my fan brush now, which is hidden at the bottom here somewhere. There we go. So I'll just take some a little bit of black gesso. Mix in a bit of that water and then just gently see I've already started the page for next month. And that's it. I'm showing restraint today. Let's clear that up. I know it's a wet white, but I'm going to leave those splatters as they are. I'm not going to attempt to dry those at all. But I'm going to dry them. I'm just going to wipe them off. <laughs> right, now that lot's dry, I've grabbed a stencil. Just take that one off. So that's drips and splatters. We're definitely using that one. Um, so the next one after those is to add a stencil or two. But I'm only going to use one. Um, so I've got this, I think this is a Diane Reevely stencil. Uh, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to add some ink through this one. And it's just vintage photo. And I'm just going to add a little bit up here. And the, the way my brain is working this is that obviously this is a story. So these jumbled up letters are kind of like words of the story. Kind of floating through the air. That's just the way my brain works. So I'll add some more over here. A few there. And we'll do a few down here as well, above and below. I think I'm going to get a visit from the dogs. Just had one of them come upstairs, it's Nipper. I think he's going back to bed. <laughs> Bless him. He's had a hard morning so far, he's been out for a walk. Okay, so I'm happy with that. But what I want to do is because we've got all these lovely letters here, I think I'm going to put the word wild thing up here just using these, these little sticky letters use what you have why not but i'm going to do it so it's kind of like floating amongst those other letters so this may take a little while so depending on what it looks like and how long it takes me to do all this, if all of a sudden I jump into fast forward, you'll know it took me far too long. I just need to pop that out in the middle. There we go. Trying to get it straight, but not always easy. I'm going to turn that one around, I think. Nearly there. And 
it stick on the exclamation point. Maybe I should have started a bit further that way, but I don't really mind. I don't really mind that at all. Um, so let's put that to one side. And then I think just to fill in a couple of gaps where there's obvious gaps in the background, like up there, and, and I'm just feeling it down here. There we go. I'm just feeling it there. Right, so what I also need to do now is just to add a little bit of ground to those characters. So hopefully I had the forethought yes, of putting my Stabilo all pencil away. So let's just create a little bit of shadow just underneath here and then we'll just add in a little bit of water just to kind of activate that All right, what we'll do we'll turn it upside down because I can just push it a little bit I could just fade away like that and then we'll do the same thing just take some of that water off and turn that around I do love these Sibylla all pencils. I'd like to see if I can get some of those because I think they would make really good um, tools just for doing watercolouring, which I suppose that's what they were made for. So there we go. All right, let's turn that around a little bit. And then I'm just going to push it down all the way down there. A bit more water. And I'll just start to fade that away a little bit. There we go. And actually, I don't think I want to do <laughs> much more to that. I'm actually really happy with it, so let me just try it off. So there we go, I think, yeah, I'm going to call it a day. Um, so for once I've not used all of the ingredients, um, but I'm happy with the way it's turned out. So I'm just going to just sign it there, and today is the 1st of April. So it's April Fool's Day here in the UK. I don't know whether anybody in the other countries celebrate. It's not really a celebration. But there you go. So there is my art journal page for April 2023's Mission Inspiration. So I think mission accomplished. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create my art journal page, which has taken a bit of a turn from what I kind of envisioned it would take today. But hey ho, that's just the nature of the game, isn't it? Um, so I hope you've enjoyed watching that. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. It really does help support the channel and makes the YouTube algorithm suggest me to other people as well who may not already have found me. So that's why clicking that thumbs up is really important just to spread the word. Um, also, don't forget, you can click the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already. So that's it for me. Don't forget as well, there is a clickable link in the description area below if you want to join um, in with our Mission Inspiration Art Challenges over on our Facebook group. So this is the first one for this month. There will be another one in a fortnight's time. 
a mini challenge in a fortnight's time so we do two a month um so that's it from me for now i will see you all again very very soon bye for now I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget, you can access your exclusive angel-only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.